Hi, Guy. Hi, Matt. How are so you we doing? do a math now, right? Yes. So applied materials. So yes, can you tell me something about them? Because I think I got this one out of a screener that I used on Value Line because I think they have a very good mm. return on total capital. And I already see it there, it's around 20%. Uh, but what do they do? Yes, so they are the world's largest supplier of semiconductor manufacturing equipment. They, they have a lot of products, uh, tens of thousands, I, I think, uh, around the world. And their products are used in essentially every step of the process, with the exception of lithography. So they are really essential to, to the manufacturing uh, and process. They are, and they are based in the, uh, in the US, right? They are a US company, yes. Okay, and they've been... Um... Now they're trading at $91 per share. I see, as I said before, a return on total capital of 20% and a return on equity of 25%. Market cap is around $80 billion. And uh, as we've seen also with other companies, the, the stock price has been just increasing in the last 10 years. This um, maybe is not as stable as some others that we have seen, but yeah. it has been growing up with some bumps uh, along the road. I see especially yeah. uh, 2015, then from 2011 to 2013, basically the, the price didn't, didn't change much. And then 2020, of course, they got hit as, as many others. And then as most of the stocks so far, probably almost all of them, except some Chinese stocks, their year-to-date performance is negative. Um, and they've been growing pretty, pretty well in the, in the last five to 10 years, as we've seen from Value Line. Their revenues per share has been growing at 12%, analyzed by the cash flow at 18%, the earnings at 20%, even their book value has been growing at 7%. And multiples are actually not that inflated as we've seen for, no, for yeah. many other companies, right? If you look at the PE ratio mm -hmm. is 15, the price to cash mm -hmm. flow is 13, price to revenue is three, and currently maybe they're just slightly higher or lower. So basically the, the multiples somehow do not really worry us so much. And then you no, are no, forecasting no, no. Double, double digit growth for, for the next 10 years. I see, the, for example, uh, earnings at 15%, uh, their book value at 20%, uh, the cash flow at 15%. So maybe here, um, of course, you know, you guys already see that the expected CAGR from this is around 13%. Uh, but a question that I had to you, also, you know, mm. leaving the floor to you to comment on, to comment on, on all of this, is how do you come up, for example, with a projection of a growth at a 20% annualized rate of the book value? Is there uh, anything behind oh, okay. these numbers that you can tell us yeah so okay so the book value is, is a bit uh different than than other quantities because it depends on the management uh whether or not they want to to use the return earnings or, or not so of course in order to grow bo book value they, they have to have earnings uh, but once you have these earnings you may decide, for example, uh, like Apple, to buy back aggressively shares or, or do other things and, and the book value can, can go down. In, in their case, actually, the, the book value almost always went up with the exception of 2018. Uh, but okay, so in, in general, there are a few points that convince me that we can have double digit growth. So one point is, is this a wide moat company or not? Yes, essentially they have, they, they are an essential company. Is there a tailwind to the industry? Yes. How many competitors do they have? Not very many. So LAM Research is one and uh, ASML in, in, may, may be like marginally a competitor. In, in the case of AMAT, it's also important that they also operate in uh, making tools for OLED displays. Uh, so is there a tailwind there as well? Yes. I mean, essentially every time, you know, we, we buy a new uh, device, uh, there's a display with a certain probability there's an OLED and AMAT made the tools to make it. Essentially, there are these marginal 
or, or contextual environmental attributes of the industry. And then I look at the past and the analyst projections. And in this case, the analysts, when I say analysts, by the way, uh, I, I don't, I'm not referring to banks, investment banks, I refer to either value line or, or morning star, so independent analysts. They are even more bullish than, than I am. I mean, as you, as you can imagine, I am uh, relatively more, You're a bear. more conservative. <laughs> well, not a bear, but uh, let's say I, especially in terms of multiples, I, I try to, to, be, to be conservative. In terms of growth, I try not to be too, too optimistic. But in this case, I think that uh, essentially they have all the tailwinds that are imaginable. Okay, so, good. And I see here that the, uh, since they also pay a small dividend, not so small, but yeah. uh, they have a dividend yield of 1.1%, they've also been growing at a 12% annualized rate in the past, and yeah, this yeah. is expected to become around 0.8%, so the total CAGR from this model is around 14%, and our observation on the multiples is reflected in this projection because the effect of the multiples on the expected CAGR is only, let's say, negative 2%, whereas we've seen negative 8, negative 10 for for many other yeah. uh, many other companies and then again yeah, yeah. i think since they've been paying this this dividend it's worth wi uh, while to to look also at the dividend based model right yes yes they they have paid a dividend for a long time i mean it, it makes sense to evaluate it yeah, um, and i see that you get a kager here of around eight percent which is way more conservative than, than, than what you got from the multiple based model uh but still a pretty good Kager and also just wanted to say that as we've said many times maybe at the beginning of this channel that these numbers are also uh, lower so the expected Kagers that we are getting for this company in particular now are smaller than they return on total capital those mm -hmm. returns that we usually look at because those were more around 15 20 percent and that's that's reassuring for us in a way to be aligned with those numbers or more conservative than, than, than those numbers. Yeah. We are happy when we see something like this, actually. Uh, and then what about the DCF model, Guy? When it comes to the DCF, so I, I have to say that they grew their uh, cash flow in, a, in an astonishing way in the last 10, 15 years. Mo most of it comes from operating cash flow, so like cash that they generate and the uh, capital expenditures are not so high, which is quite good. So in, in the last uh, 10 years, the cash flow grew by 18%. In the last five years, actually it grew faster to 27%. But then again, we have 2021. It was a strange year. The operating cash flow went from $4 to $7. And so I am using 6.5. This is a little bit closer to the 2021 20, number, but I'm, I'm doing it because the uh, free cash flow for 2022 is forecasted to be $8, so significantly higher than this. So I'm using the 6.5 and I am very conservative in terms of growth. I am essentially forecasting a very significant slowdown, uh, you know, starting from 15, arriving at 5, uh, the average is more or less 10, and this would be a very significant slowdown uh, compared to, to the past and compared to the present. Despite all of this, the CAGR is 13% is due to the DCF, so it's kind of reassuring. Uh, I have to say. Yeah, I think this is, um, you know, very good looking, I would say, DCF yeah. model. And then as we said, also, we're going to maybe do a video where we take an example and we explain in a little bit more detail all these different entries and numbers because it can be useful right. for, for some people. And then eventually the idea is also to maybe release some PDFs or yeah. easy to look at documents, like one page or two pages document where we kind of sum up all of this analysis 
uh, and maybe we can make this interactive it's just a google sheet so we could also um, share it at some point we'll see because i mean one one thing is to build the model and then which which i would say maybe it's like 50 percent of it but then the other 50 percent is your assumptions on growth and so on so it's Absolutely. your yes knowledge and understanding of of the company so if if you give me the model basically it's that, that doesn't mean anything it's not enough to do anything mm. but anyway thanks also for um for this guy uh, i will just scroll down so that we show all the different entries and then i think we'll uh, we'll do another uh, another stock valuation okay yeah okay guys thanks bye thank you Matt.